Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is a new interview video. First, I'm going to give a disclaimer. Nothing meant for illegal purposes. Everything we talk about is in the past. We're not uh, talking about anything current. It's all for history, knowledge, educated opinion, and uh, experience. So, I have with me today... A very special guest, Mr. Hicks. How you doing, hey, Mr. Hicks? Thank you very much. I'm doing great, sir. Good, uh, good, man, good. Uh, thank you for having me on your program. Yeah, I One couldn't. One of the best programs you can come across. Thank you very much. Yeah, I couldn't not have you on. You know, for those who are not in my group, uh, Mr. Hicks is a great contributor, a lot of knowledge, a lot of breeding stuff. We'll get into the breeding a little later. But first, I want to ask you, Mr. Hicks, how did you get involved with the breed back okay. back in the day when? And, uh, you know, just give us a yes, little sir. bit of that. Yeah, a little history. Yeah. Well, I was born a long time ago, <laughs> back in the 60s. And uh, where I lived at, it was all around us. And so I had an uncle that was a great influence. He didn't breed pit bulls, but he bred German shepherds. And so from the age of two to five, I was like a... Uh, his way of showing people how dogs are gentle. And as he talked to people and all that stuff, you know, I was around, I picked up, and I used to go shoot marbles across the street at around that same age. One day this guy pulled up and he had one of the ugliest dogs I ever thought I saw. <laughs> it was a little black dog, and it looked like a cross between a dog and a pig. And I was curious about this dog. And so, uh, the guys I used to shoot marbles with, we were a little kid. His father, used, they father used to come out and shoot marbles, and that was one of his friends. And long story short, you know, he was working them dogs. After he worked them, he dropped the dog off at his house so he could keep them for a couple of days. And so, you know, we was curious, all us kids, and looking. So what happened one day, we came up on where everybody used to work with dogs. So when I saw the dogs work, he was like, no more rent in pen. I like these dogs better. <laughs> So that was a part of it, and it was all through the neighborhoods. But I guess really, around '76, that same uncle bought some land out there in Palmdale, California. wasn't too many people out there back in those days. The high desert. But it's, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, he had a neighbor that was an old dog man, and he was born probably around the turn of the century. So he was about in the '70s when I met him. And when my uncle first bought this property. As he was showing us around, this big old dog came charging at us. He wasn't charging in a mean way, and he was a big old brindle pit bull full of muscle, and his name was Amigo. And I fell in love with that dog, and the guy told me even more about the dog. So, you know, being a kid and what I had to do, I went out there to go get my own little dog like that. And so I had one not long, and, you know, I was just hooked. And that's how the story goes. You know, my yeah. cousins used to breed pit bulls, and friends I had had pit bulls, and I, I moved around a little bit, and so when I stayed with them cousins, you know, you had no choice. You know, this is what we do. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Do you remember how that uh, that brindle dog of the old man was bred? Did you have any idea? No, sir. He was, uh, he was some of his bloodline. I couldn't tell you. You know, I don't want to tell no stories, but... He told us and all that, but I can't remember much. But I do know the first dog I got as a puppy around 76. Not long after I met him, I don't remember a whole bunch, but I remember Corvino, the right. bloodskin dog. Yeah. And, and I've always been a, a fan of both the, the Corvinos and the eyes on the form of, but yeah, that was a part of my first little puppy. Yeah. Yeah, some yes, sir. top dogs back in the day, you know, a lot of the Corvino yes. dogs were brindled like that, you know, and Heinzel too, you know. You yes, know, those sir. guys, they they uh, traded dogs back and forth, you know, Heinzel, Corvino, Colby, they knew each other, Tudor, like that. So to get a dog bred like that early on, you know, that's a pretty good uh, happenstance, you know. Yes, sir. Because yes, I was kind of like you. The first dogs I got, you know, I didn't know how they were bred. They were just local dogs. And uh, right. you can kind of guess, you know, later on maybe thinking back, hey, they were bred like this or bred like that. But, you know, them guys, they they just had dogs. 
Yes, sir. Uh, and some of them bred their dogs like that. They didn't really keep pedigrees or records or anything like that. That's that's typical. You're 100 percent correct right. because I mentioned my cousins and I'll say I know they had dogs about 78, 79, but they got enough to breed around about 80. And some of them still got dogs. And if you ask them, they don't know what their dogs came from. They just been breed them so long. Right. Right. And you know, I joined the military after high school, traveling around. And as I went different places, you see a lot of that across everywhere. These yeah. some real good dogs, some real knowledgeable dog man, but yet they have their own, and some of them really didn't care about the paper, they just care about the function. Exactly. You know? exactly. So when I talked to one person, it wouldn't be so much of uh, somebody famous, but he'd say he got his dog from this person to that person. Mm -hmm. That's all he know. Right, right. Well, thank you for your service. I have a lot of family in the military. I have a lot of respect for the military. Oh, man. Yeah. Make sure you tell him I say yes, sir. Yeah. I have uh, my stepfather before me served, and I have one of my daughters about to go into basic training next month. There you go. You got three generations over here. I have a son-in-law that was in the Navy, daughter finna go to the Army, and uncle been in the Air Force. We love this country like we love those dogs. That's right. That's right. Yeah, my dad, his, all my uncles, great uncles, you know, were in the military, uh, World War Two, and korean war and then had an uncle in the marines vietnam and oh, man. uh son-in-law you know cousins my son-in-law and uh three of my grandchildren are are in the military now right now as we speak you know so oh man just, yeah i love it tell yeah. them tell them i said thank you for their stuff i sure will from the, from the heart yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. now some some of the earliest the go through that process you know some of the earliest dogs because you know, probably like me, I'm guessing this is what happened. You get dogs, and you fool with them. You do whatever you do with them back in the day. And then, eventually, you get into the breeding process, right? Yes, sir. So, how how did that how did that process go for you, you know, from well, I, getting I, the uh, I, I, whatever bloodlines you got, doing what you did, yes, and sir. then into the breeding aspect of it? Yes, sir. Like I said, I've uh, been dealing with them dogs, them cousins, and... I came around breeding as a, uh, it's just something that happened from a bad, I turned something bad to something good. See, I was traveling and I had to go overseas. And so I went to one of my cousins and okay, he going to keep this dog for me till I come back. They gave away my dog. Oh, geez. And so, yeah. And so when I came back looking for my dog, they said, we well, get that one away. You can have this one. And, you know, long story short, that wasn't what I wanted. So I said, you know what? I just go buy me a dog. And so I was living in a different part of the country. And this is the 90s. And long story short, you know, I was in a, a good place for bulldogs. I came across a good one, a good one. His dog name was Apollo. And he already had made a name for himself. And, you know, a lot of people liked him. A lot of people knew about him. But that was something I liked and wanted. But. Some came up with Apollo, so I sought out the dogs. It was local dogs from this part of Texas. And uh, as my little journey goes, it was so many. It wasn't a famous household, but people out here knew these dogs. One dog that stood out named Frank Pratt, and he was known for producing. It was a couple more dogs, such as from a dog named Crum. And long story short, it wasn't so much the name it was what these dogs brought to the table that caught my attention. And so I like dogs that start off young. I like certain dogs with a certain build, certain attitude. I like stable in the mind, stable in the body. And I got that from some of these dogs. What happened was it's, it took a whole lot of dogs to find the one or two. I didn't just come across those, but you know how the story goes. You might take 100 dogs just to find the one you love. And so when I came across some dogs caught my attention, I decided to stick with it. And uh, me and my cousin had talked through the years, you know what I'm saying? You know, you've been doing this a long, I think it was probably 17 years or something like that, for me being around dogs and the dogs to actually wanted to start breeding dogs. I didn't just buy two dogs and some of breed dogs. Right. And so, you know, that's why I try to tell a lot of people, you know, you know, if you're trying to force something to be special, it ain't going to never happen. But when you come across something special, you know, take advantage of it. 
And so, yeah, I stuck with the dogs that I like, and uh, they didn't fail me. But being young, I made young people mistakes, meaning that, uh, yeah, I loved the dog, but I bred myself into a corner. And so that's why I try to help people now, you know. You always got to look for the future. And if you only focus on one thing, sometimes you'd be your own worst enemy. Very good Once advice. I had uh, bred myself into that corner, it was a matter of uh, just paying more attention. I didn't believe in throwing away the baby with the bathwater. That means I'm not going to get rid of them, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what the strength and weakness is and go out my way to improve it. And so the deal turns from one generation to a handful. And once you see them, you start getting them traits again. And, you know, just building up from that right there. Very good but, advice. Yeah. Yeah, y'all had my cousin to thank. If he'd have gave me my dog and I tell you somebody else my dog, I wouldn't be breeding dogs right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What, uh, what were the bloodlines you started out with when you, when you started your breeding program? Or did they just fall into place? Whatever you saw that was good, you're going to use it? Or did you have the Bingo. mindset, you know, I'm going to look Bingo. for this or I'm going to try that or something? Yeah. What happened was I was always a fan of certain bloodlines, but my dogs came from what I saw in the dog. I, I didn't really care about how they was bred. I knew how to breed dogs. It was more focused of this dog would be a good thing, but I want to add this dog over here to it. And it wasn't so much how they was bred. It was how I was going to breed them. And so the initial dog, was more scatterbred, and even a couple of them had purebred but unknown. And so after I bred them like five to seven generations, then I crossed like the alligators to them and the saw from Burt. And uh, the alligator came from Baton Rouge and Kirkwood. I spoke to Roger Kirkwood. Somebody took one from my yard and his yard did a cross, and I got one of the best dogs I had. Mm. And uh, it was Boss Man. He made a little name for himself. And... uh. He had a belly mate to that dog, boss man named Cisco. So Roger Kirk would pass away from throat cancer, I believe, or something like that. But we corresponded about them belly mates. And then I had a, got a dog from Bert. Well, one of my friends bought a dog from Bert and went back and bred the muzzle and gave me one of the puppies and lost every shot. He was okay. But when I crossed into one of them dogs, I got old Johnny Rock here. He you know. And that right there, he was a it was a good dog. Mm. And uh, was, once it started, go what, ahead. Was the Sorrel's dog, was it the more heavy Corvino stuff? Was it bull? Yes, sir. Was it, yeah. Yes, sir. He was more heavy Corvino. You know, they caught my attention because, you know, I live and die Corvino. Back in them days, I didn't really hear about no red boy or nothing. But I knew if somebody wanted a little dog, get a little extra game, is that Corvino was going to do it for them dogs back then. You're right. And the two to Carver was alligating, so that'll bring a little bit of that kicking power that you might not see in the other dogs. And so some of the scatterbred dogs I had, they had some old family red in them, some brown lows, and they had some uh, Eagleton, some Deacon Dover Bat and Ross's Red Devil, and stuff like that. Right. You know, yeah. and so down here, we kept small circles. It was more like being the mechanic, not so much the driver. It was about, okay, look, I like a sturdy dog, and I'm willing to invest my life into this. It wasn't no, you know, if this ain't the one, get rid of me, it was okay. You got exceptions, you got excuses, and sometimes you got what you want. But uh, that took a lot of work, a lot of work, you know. When you start breeding dogs, the families, I try to breed the purest and from the source or close to the source. And I'm not looking for this dog to be A1. I'm looking to see how it works with mine because I'm not breeding those. I'm adding to my dogs. And so lots of times you have to outcross and come back in to that, get that quarter out or that eighth and out. So I know that, but you don't make excuses. You still want the best of the best. So... Yep, That's not exactly. Well, that, that area you're from, you know, you have a, you know, a lot of the Carver blood, Dybul stuff, whether it's oh, yeah. Alligator, Deffenbach, you have Mayfield stuff, all, you yes, know, sir. even uh, Usselton and, you know, Oklahoma had, you know, um, uh, well, Oklahoma had Usselton and, and 
yes, sir. some of the you know like Tommy Sherwood stuff you know heavy heavy Dibo stuff you know yes sir and if you look my pedigrees all them you name you'll see a little bit of all that sir yeah yeah yes, yeah definitely. Maloney you know that kind of yes sir it's uh oh hey, you a wise man Mister what's going on keep going Mister Garcia <laughs> keep going yeah I was hey, gonna you know, say the you know out here you know Bert Bert recognize the uh the value of the corvino blood you know so did indian sunny and mexican dan out here you know so some of the earliest stuff i saw was the bolio corvino yes sir. uh eli crosses you know yes, but they sir. they were basically corvino first then the bolio then they added the eli later and that that yeah. uh you know at that time whether it was because of uh people knew Corvino or they heard of him or they read about him, you know, yeah. it was that gameness that caught their eye, you know, That's right. and that's what they're known for. They have ability to, it's nothing about that, but it's just, Can't you know, that yeah, you want to retain it, keep it as much as you can. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, that was, that was very interesting. Good advice too. You just gave now, how did yeah, you, sir. uh, how did you come to develop your standards basically, you know? Well, you know, my dogs, I, I deal with all kinds of people, and so all areas, because some dogs not might, might not be for hog hunting. Some dogs might strictly be for weight pulling. Some other dogs might be for another task. And so it just what task I'm looking for. With my standards was, it was gameless performance first when it comes to hunting. And, like, it, you know, I don't know if people know, when people came down and, my dog's on a hog on the TV show some years back. Mm. There are a couple of them, yeah, was on American Hoggers with uh, Team Ronnie Creek. Matter of fact, one of the guys contacted me a couple of days ago. Nice. And so I, my journey started in Los Angeles, then from Compton now out here in Texas. And so out here in Texas, it's many of uses. And, you know, my father's a cowboy. My brother, my, I got a brother, Mike, but he know more about dogs than some other people. But... <laughs> Yeah, Mike's a cowboy, but he used him for all kind of stuff for his, uh, his uh, ranch, his little farm. And so, you know, if they looking for a dog to help with them cows, then I got this one. If somebody else want a dog solely for confirmation, okay, then this is for you. But I try to keep all my dogs working regardless of what the standard, I mean, what the task is. I want a good dog that's going to hunt. I try to keep dogs traditional size. I want to traditional look when you see that dog it should look like the family of dog you know should be no second guessing but family regardless of color and there should be a certain style uh style about it confirmation about it to let you know it's from the family also especially their attitude and so yeah yeah that i see that kind of changing you know as well as i do back in the day you could you could look at a dog you pretty much tell what bloodline is from you know bingo Bingo. And That's I, right. I'm, you know, in today's time, I'm kind of confused, and it might be because there's more outcrossing done, or the dog yes, is more worldwide, so you're getting dogs from here and there and everywhere else, you know. But back yes, then, if it was an Eli dog, you could tell. If it was a Sorrels dog, you could tell. Yes, Corvino, right. You know, uh, yes, white yes. dogs out here in California, you know, even the the little boots, dog, a lot of stuff, but they had a you certain tell. certain. Look to a certain build, you know. Demeanor, that is style about them. All if that. that dog did this style, then you know, chances are from this family. Yeah. If it, had to, if it fit the look, it fit the... And so, that's that's pretty much always been my goal, to set and maintain a family standard because, like you said, back in the day, it was more family dogs. You know, Don Mayfield had a family. All different people had a family, but, you know, in my opinion, where I said, a lot of people are basing them more off of, I guess, one thing versus the maintenance of family. You see, yeah. You see, people come and go, five years and ten years and everything. But them family dead dogs, in my opinion, is what keep this breed going. Keep this breed going because somebody has to take the time, and, you know, put the breed before their own little personal egos. I agree. And so. I agree. And uh, for those that people are not familiar with Mr. Hicks, his family of dogs have pr probably 20 generations behind them. Yes, sir. 
uh, uh, Hicks, Hicks, one. Hicks, this, that, that. So he's taken a lot of time and a lot of effort, a lot of money, always that, you know, patience, oh, yeah. all, all those cliches we use, all those uh, adjectives we use for dog men. But the result is at least, am I correct, at least 20 generations? Yes, sir, 20 generations, and uh, it's, it's more than one branch on the family tree. Right. And so, yeah. you know, even though I started with my own, I developed a base on three, and the songs was a major part of it, Eric Garvino. And as I added all these other different families to it, I still try to keep around the Hicks songs cross as the base. And so, like right now, I'm currently using some I got from my good friend, Joni Tataka. It's a Greenwood Tataka on the bottom side with mines of bird on top and a bunch of stuff in the middle. And it's like giving that family hybrid bike. Right. You know, some families, and I got some Patrick in there. I got some of everybody because, you know, all these people are my heroes. Right. You know, all these people are my heroes. It's not that I'm looking up to them, but they still somebody to look up to. Somebody to say, hey, look, you know, this person invests a lot of their life, a lot of their money, time, and just to make a breed better than what it was when they got it. Mm -hmm. And so I feel privileged that, you know, I even have some dogs in my blood line. Right, right. I but think I, to have longevity, you, you have to uh, include different dogs, different bloodlines, you know, and, you and a lot of them, you know, when you, when you, uh, let's say, let's say you have Klaus dogs, right? Yes, sir. Well, if you get the, some of the Bolio stuff, it's got Klaus's crosses in it. So yes, there's sir. always some commonality generally behind the dogs. Now, now you're getting them from a particular breeder. They have their own way of breeding and their own signature you. dog, you know, a family of dogs, yes. but there's a lot of commonality in those uh, dogs, but you, you know, I, I'm the same way. I think you always have to get something, not not it's always, but but you know, best, you have to in, include yeah. you know include different stuff <laughs> to keep it going. You know, yes, sir. Because as you stated before, like I said, Mr. Garcia is one of my heroes. Everybody who don't know, <laughs> they all go back to Diable. Yeah. You know, there's some other stuff that you added to Diable, but when it comes to the breed as a total, a major foundation is Diable. And so people added to this dabble to create their own families. And so that's all we're doing. We're doing the same thing they did back then with the same dogs. Exactly. But the thing is, is that we have to keep some of the standards as far as a family. Because if you stray too much, you know, a dogs that are known for something would lose that trait. Right. And, and to me, you know, they sacrificed. And the least I could do is okay. So right. It, try to just keep it going because it going. Uh, it's all about the next generation of dog men and women. Right. You know. Right. I, I always say, you know, it's uh, the dogs are basically the same, just the names change. You know, the families. Boom, there you go. There and you go. Even all these people we mentioned, whether yes, it was Soros, you know, uh, Boudreaux, Carver, Usselton, Mo Mayfield, you know, Maloney, right. almost. Anybody you could think of, Boudreaux, all have Dybul stuff in them. Heinzel, uh -huh. you know, all, all of them do, to some That's degree right. or another, you know. That's right, sir. And, and the thing is, is that, uh, that's why I say, no matter how long I've been doing it, I try to sit down and listen and learn every day. You know, I yeah. can learn something from everybody. I never did so much that I can't learn something. Right. Whether it's positive or negative, I can still learn. And, uh, it's just that I, you know, I don't really see nobody's dogs or bloodline better than another one. It might be different, but I don't see that. Now, of course, if you're serious about that, then you should think your dogs are the best. Because if you don't think your dogs are the best, then don't feed them. Right. But when it's, when it's all said and done, you know, I try to show everybody the same respect when they've been doing it for 50 years or five years. You know, it just... Agreed. You can't you can't grow if you think you know it all. And like you stated, you know, when some people look at my pedigrees, I use probably around about twenty different families from start to finish. But if you look, like I said, it wasn't just random. Right. It wasn't just scatterbred. It was okay. Let's yep. 
funneled all these down. And once it's funneled down, based on performance, now let's add to this, you know, let's not get so caught up because, you know, I had a lot of uh, dogs that I liked and other people liked. My dog Ziggy was a great dog, you know. His grandson, Bossman, was a great dog. Johnny Rockhead and so on and so forth. And, but as, at the end of the day, you know, I'm always trying to make a better bull dog. Right. And the thing is, is uh, I've seen a lot of other people's families of dogs grow while I was working on mine. Mm -hmm. There's people like Glover. He's a good, strong dog. I've been knowing him probably 30 years. It's some old people. They've been doing good. And like I said, I was in Compton. It's a guy right now. He might not have family with many generations, but uh, John, John, Janelle, he been messing them dogs a long time, mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. There's a lot of people that people who don't really hear about that uh, dedicate their lives to this breed. You know. Yeah, they've managed to stay out of the limelight. I talk to a lot yes. of old heads, and I get a lot of information from them. Of, you know, I may have heard of the person, or I may even know the person, but I don't know the dog they're talking about because they weren't, you know, advertised yes, or open to stud, nothing like that. And and yes. we're talking multiple winners and went into good competition. Bingo. So Bingo. there's there's a lot of that, you know. And there's some young guys that are really dedicated, and they want to learn. And there's some sure. stuff I learned from the young guys too, you know, which, yes, you know, it's always evolving and there's always stuff, different things that come up, you know, even with the conditioning and the, and the genetics know. and stuff like that, you know? Yes, sir. So and if, uh, if we were to say, you know, okay, that's a Hicks dog, what, what, what we'll be looking at, you know, that well, uh, Hicks dog pretty much in today's what? times. In today's time, I feel like I said I love a good hunting dog, but I, they got to be the practice. I breed for gameless ability, finish, and prey drive. Now, the mouth, it's okay, but when you go out there hog hunting, you know, dumb dog just don't do because they go through them dogs out there in them hogs. It's serious, and so the gameless you need that. You don't need the dog when the guy go over there. To, tie that hog up and let go, now he's going to get bit. Yeah. So you need that game, dog. You need the ability and finish because sometimes, you know, you, you might get stuck in the jam. So them are more important to me. I like a dog that will start up young because then I know by a certain age, based on my standards, for all 20 generations, by this age, I should see this. And the thing about it, what I try to explain to people is that, uh, when I cross a dog, I have to relearn it because it's a new dog. But if I cross it and bring it back into mine, using a quarter out, or eight, then I pretty much know the dog still. Right. And so I try to maintain, you know, a dog that's going to do the task, that loves the task and good at Now, if he don't love it, yeah, you know, that, that's not for the hunt. That could be for just a confirmation. That don't mean he's a bad dog. And like y'all say all the time, it's never about killing the dog. It's about finding somebody because it might have a different purpose. You know, I deal with a lot of vets like myself with PTSD. Some of them just want a dog. Right. You know? And so, yeah, a vet, PTSD, here you go. Yeah, that does wonders yeah. for them, you know. Yeah, they don't care about none of that mess. They don't care about the confirmation and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, if you got a dog or he got a bad unshot, give it to a vet with PTSD. He love it. Mm -hmm. He just want a friend, you know? Yep. Yep. I had a buddy back in the day. The dogs that didn't work out, you know, he loved dogs. His pit bulls, yes, if they didn't work out, most of them he'd give them to hog hunters, you know? Boom. And there they use go. them, you know? Or like you there said, you, you know, so th this this is a nice family dog. You know, that's right. The, the people that have kids and they want a dog for their kid, they like pit bulls. Oh. He'll do like that, you know, and they're, they're great with kids. You know that they're, they're you know, a lot yes, of them, sir. most of them, you know, they're good with yeah. people, all that. And it's just uh, a learning how to maintain them and learning the characteristics and all that. But they're, they're great all around dogs in that sense, you know. Oh, there you go. Because yeah. uh, every dog, he might not be good in one thing, but he might be great in another. So, and, you know, if the dog ain't for you, find them a good home. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, boy, you world of knowledge, Mr. Garcia, yeah, y'all. Yeah. In fact, you know, Leo, Leo Kennard was known for that. He never called a dog. 
ever. See there? Nothing. And didn't he have a bunch of dogs? He had more than ever. Yeah, he had uh, up to five hundred dogs. See, look at and that. And anywhere between two or three hundred of them were pit bulls. But he See. would pick up any stray, and just they would live their life out on his yard. You got to respect yeah. someone who does something like that. Man, you, know? you got to. You yeah, got that's to. the way my daughter is. She picks up any old stray. She might have five, six dogs at a time. Any old lost dog or strayed dog or whatever, if she right. finds the owner, she gives it back. If not, it's staying at her house. Whatever kind of mutt go. or purebred, whatever it is, she just right. loves dogs. And that just comes from her being raised around our dogs, you know. That is, yes, and, sir. And uh, yes, sir. They, they were companions to my children. We lived out in the country. I'm, you know, kind of like you were talking to your friend. I grew up country, so we had working cattle dogs back then. And we always had dogs, whether it was the cattle dogs, German shepherds, could be mutts or chihuahuas, all kinds of stuff. So it's in my blood, and, and eventually I worked my way to the to the pit bulls, you know. And, and there it is there. See, I got me a little piece of dirt, small farm, and, you know, I like to let them dogs run loose when everybody's in the kitchen. Listen, they don't run loose, you know. Yep, yep. Some dogs are meant to be in a shoebox, and, It'll work out a little bit better for you. Sometimes just cut them loose and let them be a dog on the farm. There you go. There you just go. Just let them stretch his leg out. It's rabbit, south there, it's deer, but that, 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 sometimes that makes a good dog better. Yep, that's true. It's good natural work. Their instincts come out, you know, they, fresh air, all that, you know, just nothing but positive yes, about it, you know. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a game of fence, you know, some people talk about how dog the great is, but if you tell them city, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, know. yeah. The dogs are intelligent, you know. This has come up too, you know, and people say, "Well, my dog, he don't want to work, and he won't do this and that and like that," you know. And and a lot of it goes back to, you know, they didn't do nothing with the dog till he's grown. They oh, want to wait right, and right. see if he works out, and they like him this and that and style and all that stuff. But they sat on their chain or in a kennel their whole life, That's so right. of course at that point it's going to be hard to teach them anything. Yeah, but I tell them, dogs are smart. If we see dogs in circuses and they're riding bikes and they jumping through hoops of fire and you see some can drive a car and drive a motor boat, yes, sir. then, you know, the problem really isn't the dog, it's the person. Oh, and, and, he uh, just said it all. He just know. said it all. Because uh, I sit down, I get a chair, I sit down next to my dog for about an hour. Get up, 30 minutes, and I try to spend time with them dogs. Not just, you know, I'm going to give you a little food and go on. Sometimes you have to, you know, learn the dog, you yeah. know, what makes it tick. And and if you know that dog better, sometimes you know what better to do because every dog don't work the same. Every dog might not do the same. and You won't know that unless you spend time with that dog, you know. That's good advice. It's true. You know, if you really love dogs, you'll... Spend some time with them. But if you're so dog poor where you have too many dogs and you can't spend all the time you need, then, you know, maybe you need to cut back a little bit or That's right. give somebody a dog or something. You know, somebody you trust, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like you. I liked early starters. Now, That's there's right. a, you know, you heard, you, we've all heard that old saying, early to start, early to quit. I, I've never found that to be true. No, sir. And... Just because it starts early doesn't mean you have to start it early. That's you know correct. I mean? That's a thousand percent correct. It, 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 nothing not good, wrong with not waiting, good. you know. Yes, yeah, sir. You just said a whole lot right there, sir. Yeah. He just made a big statement because yeah. they start off early. You still have to just sit back and let the puppy because a puppy is still a puppy and somebody will bring it out of them. You go out there and you take them over there and he got on TV or that American Hawk and sometimes them dogs ain't going to perform right because you're looking at a puppy, not a dog. Right. And so, yeah, just keep that in mind. I like the early starters because they're showing me what part of my blood is coming out. But if it's somebody else's dog, I might have to wait a couple of years because I have to learn what they dogs are. I can't make their dogs my standard just go. because I'm feeding it. That don't work. I can't hold somebody else's dog to somebody else's standards and so you know that's what i try to keep it don't you know you can't judge this dog from that dog you have to see the dogs and then you'll know you know because if you really care about what you're doing then you'll take time to learn how to do it the right way 
you know. Exactly. But one, Can't you know, buy knowledge. You got to learn it. That's right. Once you know your dogs, you know everything about them. Yes, sir. But if it's something new or something different, you know, like you said, you got to wait and, and uh, see. Let yes, them get some maturity, see the characteristics, all that. You're one of the few people that, you know, in my group or anywhere that actually said, you know, I like early starters, you know. It's almost taboo for people to say that because there's that stigma, that old yeah. saying and stuff, you know. And I've said yeah. it too. That's the way I liked them. That was the characteristics of their ancestors. So I expected it in the family bred pups to come out that way. That's correct, sir. If they and didn't, then I have to make a decision. Well, what am I going to do with this dog? Is he worthy of whatever? And all that. But it was just a trait. It's not the be-all and end-all and all that. But it's something no, it's that was in my the family of dogs that I had. And something I expected in pups. But hardly know ever, nobody says it. And when I seen you say it, I, you know, I'm, I'm reading it. I'm going, yeah, there you go. That's See, it. I ain't the only one who says it. You know? Yeah, because that's a stand that I told from my family. Not from ego, but from consistently seeing him do that. Right. And so I got a 10-year-old dog right now, but he's been he, he was the same from the time he was 10, from the time he was two months old. Now, I'm not going to take no little two months old and let's go take No, brother. No, 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 no. Right. But I just say when I've seen my dogs, 10, 15, 20 generations, then I know that's my dog because yeah. that's what they do. Yeah, even even uh, you know the hog hunters I know you know they have a yes, way sir. of of teaching their dogs to hunt hogs. So if it's a younger dog, they put them on a small pig. There you know, you if it's an older dog, you know, with some experience, then that's different. But you know, uh, for instance, you know, I went on a hog hunt with my friend one time. He had a little thirty pound Boudreaux bred dog, right? Yes, sir. So he put it on like a hundred and twenty pound sow, right? It wasn't yes, it wasn't no three hundred pound hog, because you know that the hog would probably kill the dog. So it's kind of the that kind of schooling, you know, that yes. you have to uh, have to recognize and and go along with, e even whatever function you're doing with the with the yes, dog. Sir. You 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 can't put a a four month old pup in a treadmill race at a at a competition nope. show. No. You know, they're not developed No matter yet. how spicy he looks. No, right. no, no. Yeah, you might hurt him. That's right. But you, know. you get a two-year-old to do the wall climb and the treadmill race and the weight pull, now you're okay. You know? Yes, sir. So, something like that along those same lines. And it yes, just sir. amazes me sometimes how much me and you agree on stuff, you know? I, oh. I love it. I love it. Yes, sir. You my hero. And, you know, I took a three-year-old to a weight pull contest back in 95 and and that just wasn't his thing. Yeah. You know, he didn't want to stay on the track. He want, he got other minds. But yeah. You take a little puppy out there, and he might tear the track up. He might love it. Yeah, that's right. Every dog is different in some aspect, but some of them might have a common thing about each one of them. So if your dog don't turn out in one, try something different. See what else he might be good at. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hell, the dog might get you involved in something else, you know? Bingo. There, there, there you, you go. Know. Yeah. So what what would be the, the general or typical structure of a Hicks dog? How, how are they generally built? Well, like I said, I have different branches on my tree. So I might have 20 generations, but it, it's at least a dozen different type of Hicks. Some people got my old tent as dogs just from this area, and those are a, a stock. They, they're not high as a dog, but they have a similar type of building structure to them. Right. Then some people have mines crossed with the alligators, with Mr. Brown dogs and Bat Dog Purple across. And long story short, these have a nice structure and a solid rear end, a little bit, uh, I can't say it, a little bit higher in the ass end than it is the front. Okay. But when you start going to that little dog money I got from Burke Heavy Carvino, now you start seeing a little slight roach back and a little, like a little roll, low, low rider in the back. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. Everything serves a purpose. Right. And so when I started crossing the Bolio tombstone in my dogs, them dogs is a little bit more leggy, little more bone bone. Yep. I crossed with Eli, Red Boy, Zebo, and them dogs right there. He might have baby tanks and all that. I mean, that, that little, 
it didn't stick solid. I had to blend it to get a solid, consistent look, if that makes any sense. Right. But now that uh, I tried some with the white oak body, and I tried some with the uh, Abby, I really love that dog. You got some dope. to get the dog. Mm -hmm. But uh, that brought the bone back into my dog. So what happens is you'll get some dogs that might be a little thinner bone. You might get someone with a thick bone. And uh, I don't have big head dogs. I don't have big dogs. The average size, you got the little traditional dogs, in my point of view, you know, low 40, 41, 42, maybe 45 males. And then you might have some females in the 30. But like I said, if you go back toward the alligator stuff, you get something around 50, 47, 50. And so. Right. In general, low to mid forties, you have a dog with a nice size head or just small, not big headed because too much head, in my opinion, is too much energy. And so I like a little back end on them, little muscles, but not too much muscles. Most of my dogs I try to keep not a a narrow chest but a smaller chest. You know, wide chest, yeah, they they burn out if they do other stuff. But right. Right. Yeah. When you see them, forty pound dog, medium size head, maybe a slight roach, not much of a roach. Now, just yeah. yeah. You know, him, boy, he be that little screaming demon. Said, "Hey, throw <laughs> the ball, throw the ball." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's huh? interesting because they're you know, uh, you can look a lot of look at a lot of you know the size of the dog. You know, like you said, if you got the Alligator stuff, they're going to be a little bit bigger dogs, you know. Yes, sir. Maybe you have the Bolio, Corvino stuff, they're going to be a little bit smaller. Yes, know, sir. On, on the smaller end. So yes, that, that reflects their blood, too, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, their, 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 what family they came from, along with the structure and the build, the head and all that stuff, you know. Yes, sir. Because I would try to keep some of them just my soul as an alligator. And then I came up to a point where I just... It was like nine. It was a certain group, and those are the forty-pound dogs that, are, that mean a little bit more to my heart. Mm -hmm. But that Greenwood had an extra little bit of Corvino off in there. Yeah, I did. You know, I had, yeah, I'm a yeah, I love Corvino. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Uh, you know, there was a several guys up in the Chicago area, even after Corvino passed. You know, that that had that blood. You know, the the divines got from that you know oh yeah got, that's got, another one of my evil mr david divine yeah he don't know me but yeah he's my evil too. yeah he's good people and uh uh Bodzianowski had that stuff you know and there's there's some of it even in uh double grand champion tornado and oh you know, people be surprised that they go back farther on their pits and you see it kind of permeated because the like tudor and heinzel you know they they had corvino dogs in their blood they traded yes, dogs sir. with corvino you know that was one of their foundations you know yes, and i sir. think just back just like you did spoke about it now back then they recognized that those dogs were very game and they had yes. to have some of it you know yes, yeah sir. yeah and so sad yeah. what you say you know the game that's regardless of what it is has to come first yeah and so even though Red Boy is a go-to these days, I don't knock Red Boy, but, you know, give me a little extra coat and I'll be a happy camp. Yeah. And yeah. so I put Red Boys in my dog. I got Highlands, few Highlands in there. Of course. Of course. And so, yeah, but that, yeah. you can't beat that coat Yeah, yeah. Because if you study Dabo's pedigree, you see pretty much linebacker coat Yep. You know, trans rascal coat Yep. And so... You know, like you said before, they're all the same dogs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there was a reason they did it. And, and like you mentioned, you know, we just kind of repeating what was done before us. That's know? all we're doing, sir. And, that's, and all doing. that's why I say, well, the, it's the same, you know, breeding patterns or whatever, same bloodline, all that. It just the names of the dogs change and the people's names change, you know. Yes, sir. And uh, that's why I, I felt it was important to do this interview with you because, you know, uh, there's a lot to your program and it could help a lot of people even if they don't know you if they just saw a yeah. hicks a hicks ped they could go through it and and look at the patterns you use and how you put it together and what you know 
what what yes. crosses and line bread, all that stuff. And and it gives you an idea of man, you know, maybe I'll try that or I could do this or you know. Yeah, it is. Because not to cut you off, sir, but a lot of people understand that a lot of these old guys use patterns. If you study pedigrees, whether it be in a Stratton book or whether it be on the internet, look at the old guys' pedigree for the family. Some of them have a consistency of good dog on top. So that means you might have bully on top and bottom of this female bread to another dog. And you start seeing patterns regardless of what family of dogs. You can see some patterns that people use, and that will help you out in your program today. Yep. yep. You know. Yeah. I've said this too, you know, if you have some success, you you don't know uh, what they did in the past, right? But you, no, sir. you making your breedings and, and it's working out for you. If you go back to the breedings that you never heard of or didn't know about, you're going to be repeating what they did, whether you realize you're doing it or not. Absolutely. Because the success works. Those patterns work. Those crosses or line breedings or whatever it is, wherever you place the dogs in the ped, the relationship to each other and all that, it works. So the results are going to show you, okay, I got good dogs from this. But if you go yes, back sir. 30 generations, you're going to see they did the same thing. I've done that same over and thing. over. Oh, man. Yeah. You my hero. <laughs> there you go. You my hero. If you go back and you get a chance to see a Kobe or a Carvino, you're going to see the same patterns. Yep. The yeah. same patterns. And all you're doing is saying, okay, look, I see three patterns. I'm going to try that three ways. You know, because it's a science project, because you won't learn unless you actually do sometimes. Right. So you have to see because you have something a little different. This pattern might not work for you and your dog, but this other pattern might be perfect for you and your dog. And there so, it is. There it is. You know the the uh, um, the successful guys, even with them, because you know some of them weren't even literate, right? They, yes, they couldn't read or write very well or at, at all. I've met some of them. You know, they, they can sign their name, but they can't really read or write, which is okay. But they know how to put the dogs together and the success of the dogs. As long as the dogs you're using are solid dogs, good dogs, what you consider good dogs. And you repeat those patterns. It's probably going to work for you. You know, that's right. I've, I've noticed that, you know, and they say you can't be scared to fail. Yeah, that's true. You can't be scared to fail. You got to put the time in work. Do some right. studying. You know, history has its place. We always, what, what always matters is what's right in front of us most, you know, the dogs we have right now, what's Bingo. there right now. But there's Bingo. a lot to history that can help us teach us stuff and, and we can learn from it, you know. That's correct. You know, because uh, a lot of people, we lost dealing with these dogs and family breeding. So I just try to do my part to, to help pass on some of the stuff that, I thought and I paid attention to this next generation. Right. You know, because, you know, if we're going to keep this breed alive, we're going to have to do what we can to pass it down to the next generation. You and I don't want to hear it. You That's know, very I, true. Yeah, I try to tell people, don't worry about getting a dog from me. Learn how to breed what I breed so you can do your own. That's you right. Know? Yeah. That's good I'm advice. I'm not trying to sell you dogs. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you how to breed your dogs better. Yeah. It's important. You, know? you, you got to have foresight, you know, and we want the breed to continue and we ain't going to be around forever. That's so you somebody got to do it, you know, and some somebody people need help. Yeah. That's correct, sir. Yeah. That's what I'm saying about you and your format. You know, there was, you, you stated this earlier. When we were starting off, there was nobody helping. It wasn't a whole lot of breed material, none of these things. And so for them to have advantage of it now, please take full advantage of it. You know? Yes, People sir. are sharing with y'all some stuff that you might have heard about well before 30, 40 years ago. That was unheard of. Nothing. They would, if anything, they'd give you wrong information because they didn't want you to do Ooh. good. <laughs> they laugh at you. Yeah. yeah. They laugh at you. But that's where it comes in. You know, okay, look, I ain't scared to fail, and I might have to try it. You know, it might, it might fail 10 times, 100 times. But once you get it right and you learn how to do it, then don't worry about it. It's like fishing. You, you never go hungry. You know, there you're never going to be perfect. The dogs ain't going to be perfect, but try to give them the best you could get. Yeah. Do your part. There it is. So, yeah. 
because if you know if i'm no genius you know i'm no i know <laughs> you know what i mean no. so if i i'm just a regular guy if i can learn how to do it anybody can learn it you know yeah, and i right. just feel that way about whatever endeavor whether it's dogs or whatever it is you like if you really love it you'll get good at it you get good at it i got a friend mr brown he went to school to learn some genetics i told you i got family members that are cowboys i got people that bred pigeons I got a cousin who pig, bred some pigs. Mm -hmm. I listen to everybody. Yeah. So sometimes they'll say something I never, never crossed my mind. Yeah, Either. that's a, that's a good point you made because uh, the breeding, you know, uh, goes. It's across the board. You know, the same methods, sure. techniques. I've talked to other people, horse racing people, uh, uh, game fowl, racing pigeons, German shepherds, mouths. We talk the same way. I even have there's a guy on online named Joseph Minkman uh, Carter, and he yes, goes right. out with minks and dogs, you know, and kills rats and eradicates them from is, people. Yeah. So he he talks the same way we do, you know. He wants there a working is. mink that does the job, that's able to do it, that's intelligent enough. Oh. The ones that don't, he just gives them to somebody as a pet, or or you know, he won't he won't breed them in into That's his it. family of mink because they don't possess the traits that he's looking for they won't do the work so why would we not listen to this guy that you that's what that? i'm saying and and the wow. way that came up was he's saying you know richard how come how come people don't do that how come people people don't do that you know they'll just breed wow. anything on pedigree and they this and that wow. and you could see the structure's bad on the dog or it's got some problem yeah. or whatever i said i don't know joseph you know that's kind of been that way with the with pit bulls you know excuses are made where in other industries they don't make excuses like that you know Thank you. Thank turkey you. farmers i live with you know by turkey they, they don't do that if it's not where they get rid of it because it's going to cost them money in the long run to try and make Wait. these birds that you know this one guy down the road he started getting turkeys that were coming out bow-legged perfectly Wait. fine turkeys but you can't sell them if they're bow-legged and you can't breed them continue to breed them because now you're going to have it where they won't even be able to walk, you know. So he recognized that early, just got rid of them. He, he sold them for 25 cents to anybody who wanted them, a whole turkey, you know. But he wouldn't, he cut it from his breeding program, whatever line of bird that was, he didn't use anymore. Yes, sir. And, and uh, you know, I just, that's the advice I give to people. You know, you'll save yourself in the long run if you just call what you don't consider, you know, worthy from your breeding program Absolutely. it's a nice dog or whatever you know but if it doesn't fit your program or it's not something you're looking for doesn't possess or it's not able to pass on the traits that you are looking for stop using it don't don't and, just don't include it and to add to what you say what, what a lot of people understand it does matter what people do because at some point all our dogs is going to meet yeah and so if you, like what Bert said, you put a little bit of this mess in this jar full of honey, you mess up the whole jar. And so we have to be more selective. You know, a lot of people understand the stuff you do on Mr. Garcia. That's why I say you're an evil. You're saving people time and money if they'll just listen to some of your stuff. Right. You know, because that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's how I can that, go out that. there and repeat these mistakes. But if you take the time to listen to his programs, he's saving y'all time and money. Yeah, that's the that's one of the goals. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you you whether it's your friends or children, whatever, you know, you don't want them to make the same mistakes you did. Absolutely. So you try and advise them uh, because you have to acknowledge they're going to make mistakes anyways. But if you can help them, you know, in one aspect or another, they don't have to go through what you went through. Or at least if they do, it's not going to take them years to learn. Right. It, it, it might cut that down where okay i see what mr garcia was talking about yes sir so now i know you know he was correct and i'm going to stop doing that or whatever you know it, hey, it, it hey. may may save you some time and money and pain Pain you know? and money. because <laughs> you know mr garcia i got a good brother of mine mr Gaines. we talk about this stuff lots of time you know them books can only tell you so much but to talk to a person or to listen to somebody and that's even deeper and I'm saying, Mr. Garcia, you can put out so much information, and I'm just 
try to do the same. Yeah. A lot of us are. It ain't about, you know, do things my way or buy my... Right. There's none of that. There's none of that. Yeah. Yep. But if we do love this breed, then we need to understand, you know, hey, we need to try to make it better. And this is one way of trying to avoid other people's mistakes. Somebody say something, listen, and they don't go over the court and try it. It might, be, it might work. If it don't work, don't worry about it. What did it cost you? Right. Good point. Yep. Because, yeah. uh, you know, not everything, it, 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 it just may not be for you. Or you may not That's get the correct. same result. But at least you tried it. You know, Whatever yes, advice I give, I tell people, don't just take my word for it. Try it. See if it works. If it does, great. It helped you. That's great. If it don't, that's okay, too. Just discontinue that's it. You know? that's and correct. that's one of the reasons I had to get you on here. Because, it, you know, like we said on the other show, and, and uh, I'll say it here, too. The, the, what you put down just in the chats, in the group and all that. People could write a book about it. Go back if you're in my group or if you see Mr. Hicks online. He's always putting information out and he's always putting his pedigrees out so you can see what he's talking about. And he gives you these different techniques, different patterns, different pieces of advice, how he did things. And it's there to help you. And yes, it's more than I could ever do. You know, I'm like you. I prefer talking this and that. But yes, he sir. he's good on the typewriter, man. He'll get out there and put half a book down. And and I learn a lot from it myself. And sometimes what he says, you know, I agree with it. But he just puts it in different words and better words. He explains it better. Is what I'm saying sometimes. You know, than than I can. And I'll look at it and go, ah, that's what I should have wrote. Oh, that that's what I meant to say. Oh, you know. Yeah. But that's part of being in this fraternity. We help each other right. and we learn from each other. And uh, uh, that's one of the reasons I say I just had to have you on here. It was always in oh, the back man. of my mind, you know. Well, you know, coming from you, but I'm super humble. <laughs> yeah. I thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, you, yeah, because we all on the same team, Mr. Garcia. Yes, sir. We all on the same team. Yes, we sir. We all have the same common interest and we all need to work together because we can all learn from each other. And we can make these bulldogs just a little bit better than what we found. Yep. Yep. That's the goal, that's, isn't it? Improvement. That's the goal. You know? And yeah. uh, even if it's just improvement with the individual person, that's improvement. You know? You yes, better huh? your family of dogs. You can uh, yeah. find some some uh, improvement here and there. Uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, make a breeding that, that was the best breeding you've made so far. And then yes, you try and top that later on that's going to take time or whatever but that, that's the whole concept you know yes sir i got to try to tell people you know you can't pick up some weights one day and expect to win mr olympia the next yeah you got to be consistent and uh i try to use my own experiences that's why i put up my pedigrees you know this is not something i read about this you know this is something i did yeah i didn't do it most of the time just one time and these are some of my results hopefully it will help somebody yeah, that's yeah. that's most convincing because, you know, I don't even know how to post my old page, you know. So so that's another thing I, you know, <laughs> that, that you have over yeah, me. Yeah, if I yeah. can help you with anything, I'm gonna help you with everything. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, you know, I like how you you know, you you give the name of a topic, you know, or whatever, and then you write something about it. Then you post that's a pad. Then you write something, another pad. I'm telling you guys. Check them out. Sometimes there's five or six pads in there, and you can just look and see the pattern, see the dogs he used, he came from, and then he'll give you the results or what it is he's looking from from a particular breeding or what he got out of a different breeding. That's educational in itself, you know. And uh, like you said, people should just take advantage. It's free. What it's we're doing free. is free. It's out there. If it helps, great. And, don't uh, help, but don't cost you nothing. Yeah, don't cost you nothing. Well... Uh, that's about it for this time, Mr. Right. Hicks. I really appreciate you doing right. this. We're definitely going to do this home. again because, you know, yes, that sir. breeding stuff, you got it down pat, and that's really interesting to some people. So we'll jump on that on the next time, too. We'll get more into that. Mr. Garcia, anytime I can, anytime. But I appreciate you for not just having me, but for sticking with helping these people. I really do. Because, like I said, I've spent most of my life around the breed. 
you are that real gem. A lot of people don't understand it because we really didn't get this information from other people in the past, those listening. We did. So I appreciate you, Mr. Garcia, and I wish you nothing but prosperity and luck. Keep doing you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir.